30%. Oh, Coca-Cola is going to do the same. Why must we always beg? Why can't black people build something like Google? Why can't you build Coca-Cola? Why can't you build all these big multi-corporations? Why can't you do it? Are you not a human being? Are you, don't you have the same brain that white people have? That is where black people should be, should be reasoning. And if we dwell on this for only two months, believe you me, there will be a different outlook all across Africa. The way we reason is poor. And I want to understand, is it Lucifer? Or is it the senior brother Satan? Or is it the uncle or the devil? Who is it exactly that, that will go into a, 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 an African youth, a young black person, a male or female, and blind you instead of you to be fighting injustice you are busy fighting those who are fighting injustice there is something i know that politicians are bad they are corrupt they are evil but that is when i see a young person instead of fighting the just cause they are busy supporting the oppressor i i i sometimes i i see them as the very habitation of everything that is wrong with black people some people say that uh, why do you always say this? You keep going back on this black issue. I said because that there is where lies the problem. The problem we have in Africa, the problem we have as black people in America, wherever we are, is because of the way we reason. The way we reason is flawed. It's not correct. And we must change it. We must change it. We must not be like those greedy people in the past that wanted slavery to continue they do, those who we are dealing in slavery or with slaves so to speak knew they know they know what their people are suffering and what because freed slaves we are returned to sierra leone that's why they call it a free town most of them we are returned to africa and those that came to africa they were learned they know they understand the humiliation they had to go through in the Americas. They came back, they were lucky enough and they came back. They, they the evil you are, the more you rise up in the judiciary. That is why they want to blackmail Binta and Yako into oblivion. Because of me, they arrested Binta and Yako's husband and son. They claim they are being tried by EFCC. So that if Binta and Yako were to acquit me, they would jail the husband and the child. That is how evil the zoo is. That's how bad they are. But she courageously gave me bail. She knew I did nothing wrong. She knew it. They were pressuring her. Revoke his bail. And she said no. They have done nothing wrong. They, 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 they don't know in all these things. They called her to a meeting in Medugri. Where they were insulting her. That didn't work. They took her to another meeting in Sokoto. Where they called all the northern, I don't, I don't know if I'll call them leaders, to be insulting her because of me. That she should have jailed me. That nothing will happen. That we both leaders have signed up to it. That our answer is with them. I will come to the meetings they've been holding against me and IPOB later on. But Bintan Yako stood strong. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure at all that the intimidation she's been forced to endure will ever stop. I don't think so. Good people like that never get to become the chief judge of the federation. Kafarati Abdul Kafarati killed Kesar. We were today. He's the chief judge of the High Court of Nigeria. He granted expert motion to the government of Nigeria, designating me a terrorist. He was rewarded. And I'm sure they're saying to Binta Nyako, if you jail him or convict him, there is a reward for you. Do you see how Nigeria works? They don't understand what justice and law is all about. No. These are black evil people from Africa. Evil people. Go behind ruin, darkness and evil. We must continue. Now, the Igbos have received serious bashing in Nigeria. She look at, just look at me. In terms of um, marginalization, this is a country that has survived going to 50 years after the Civil War, and people were given 20 pounds, no matter how much you had in the bank, and they survived without 20 pounds and are still standing. 
These were people that were promised rehabilitation, reconciliation, reconstruction. And all those who were practicing the breach, 50 years after, were still fighting in the parliament for a Southeast Commission to do those three things that were promised after the Civil War in 1970. This is a people who, in the last election, showed that they have the population to vote in a president for Nigeria. Now, recently, the gentleman who was champion in Oduduwa Republic and was incarcerated in a neighboring country has been released and is free and is traveled abroad. Now, Nandekano, who was also championing the creation of Biafra, has been kidnapped, incarcerated, even after the courts have said that he has no case to answer. The Igbo see it as further telling them that they are second-class citizens in their own country and there is a different treatment for them as compared to others. These same Igbos made their own contributions, which in no way you can say is inferior to the contribution of any other part of Nigeria for the independence of our country. These are people who are in, you know, they, they are lucky that God created them with the spirit of enterprise. And you have seen what I've done with their 20 pounds. Go around Nigeria and tell me how many cities you see that are as well developed as even let's take the state capitals. Not to talk about going to the hinterland in Igbo land and see the mansions that enterprise has created. So the country has refused to use these people for the growth of the country's economy. If they allowed the Igbos to thrive and to influence others positively, rather than hounding them wherever they are, I think the country would have developed faster and better. It was created Lagos, it was created Abuja, it was created Kaduna, Kano, most of the country, Port Harcourt. And when you have such people, it is the country to use, for the country to use them to the country's advantage and not to continue to suppress them. So we feel very, very um, uh, unhappy in the Nigerian states. But what we promised Nigerians is that we're not going anywhere. We are not going anywhere. We'll be here until we reap the full benefits of our contribution in building this nation. It is either a magnanimous, uh, the tribalized leader gives us what is our due, or by the grace of God, when we get there, well, if the current mantra is the only way people can get their due in Nigeria, when it is our turn, we see whether we produce an Igbo leader that will, will also follow that mantra and give the Igbos what they deserve in Nigeria. But we are not begging for pittance. We are not begging for uh, something that we don't deserve. We are not begging that what belongs to anybody should be given to us. No, give us the freedom to be equal partners with every member of this nation. Allow us to grow and thrive freely in our own country. And allow us to occupy positions that are valuable to every citizen of this country to occupy. So in a nutshell, we are asking for equity. We are asking for fairness. We are asking for justice in Nigeria. That's all. Nothing more than that. As long as we have these three, equity, fairness, justice, an Igbo man will thrive even in 
Aislan.